Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. This is Professionalism in Marketing and I'm Neil Wilkins. If you've been along to this, which is uh, the next in the Cambridge Marketing College webinar series, you'll know the format. We go through a range of different topics and ideas and theories and models and latest thinking. And then I give you a chance at the end to ask any questions using the chat facility, which you'll find in the menu. So have a little play uh, with the menu. Uh, buttons if you're not familiar with this system and uh, obviously you can add as we go uh, any questions within chat and I will endeavour as far as I can to answer those when we get to the end of the session. So this has been a really for me really interesting uh, series if you like. We've covered a whole range of different topics within uh, this particular programme and uh, this one obviously is professionalism in marketing, an absolutely hot topic right now uh, that we all need to be paying very very close attention to. And I'll explain why and what we can do about it as we go through this session. Um, this has been very much a series we've been trying to uh, piece together a little bit like pieces of a jigsaw, trying to piece together a number of different elements for both professional and personal development just to give you some ideas to really think about. We're not necessarily saying within this series we have every answer for you. There are clearly lots of different flavours and ways that you can interpret and actually put into practice a lot of this thinking, lots of these ideas. So there is no one size fits all, but we're hoping that this programme is proving really uh, helpful to you. And I know uh, quite a number of you from the feedback that I'm getting are sending me um, sort of messages to say that actually you're pretty much watching all of them. So um, these will build hopefully into quite a powerful set by the end of this particular programme. So this is webinar eight. Uh, the previous ones, if you have missed them and you're new to this programme, uh, the previous sessions have included things like communication and presentation skills. Uh, we've looked at the art of persuasion and negotiation. Um, a couple of um, weeks ago, we looked at thought leadership and uh, the previous one was networking, professional networking, which comes in all different shapes and forms. Today, we are talking professionalism in marketing. And as you'll see as we go through this, there is a huge challenge in a positive way, but also it's a little bit carrot and stick. So we're going to get whacked with the big stick if we don't sort of do this properly. And I'll explain how that's going to take place and some of the options available to us, because professionalism in marketing is such an opportunity right now. I've been in marketing for some 35 years and in all of that time, I can honestly say there has never been a time like we're presented with right here, right now, for a whole bunch of different reasons, which I'll go into, um, that this is a unique opportunity and possibly, maybe, in our lifetimes, we'll never have a similar kind of opportunity. So this is really the moment to strike. Once we've completed this webinar, we're going to move into a little bit more kind of sort of practical sessions, if you like, um, on the 17th of September. We're going to look at agility, flexibility and creativity. So putting some of the um, sort of the day to day practicalities around some of the things that we've been talking about. And then on the 1st of October, as we move down more deep into uh, autumn or the fall, depending on where you're watching or listening to this from, uh, we're going to talk about commercial thinking one of those areas that I think all of us, and myself included as marketers, um, can definitely improve upon. And uh, that will come into one of the focus points as we go through professionalism in marketing here today. It is really, really important that we become more commercial and less just about the delivery. And I'll explain how and why we should be doing that as we go through this. So let's get into this. I'm, I'm not sort of coming at this with any sort of definitions as to what is professional. Um, I think we all have a sense um, and a kind of a feeling by how we would interpret the word professional. Um, this is about really raising the bar. Um, to use a little bit of a cliche that is going around at the moment. Now is the single moment in all of our careers, whether we are brand new into marketing, and I know a couple of you on the session here today are really entering into this space for the first time, and this is a great time to be entering into this, this industry that we call marketing. Or if you've been in this marketing for decades, now is the moment. We've never had it like this, and you'll know if you've been in this, this game as long as I have, you'll know that this is the time that we all need to up our game. 
doing what we used to do pre-pandemic 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and trying to think that that is going to be appropriate going forward is simply incorrect in my view. This is a new commercial world. So whether we're in a business, large or small, whether in a charity, whether we're in a not-for-profit service or in a local government or central government, wherever we are using the concept of marketing and communications, there's never been a better time to deliver on the promise of the value that great marketing could deliver. So we've constantly said, hey, marketing should be doing this, marketing can do that. And we've often, lots of us, and I put myself in this category, fallen short of our potential. There is so much more that we could do, and now is the time to make that what we must do. Okay, this is a really important time. So when I talk about professional marketing, we're going to start to begin to unpick this whole opportunity now. So we, we know there's a climate crisis. We know that everybody's talking sustainability. And I'm going to get onto that in a moment. We know that we don't have unlimited budgets. We know that our customers are you know, seeing frustrations with all the products and services they're trying to source because of supply chain issues and delivery, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that there are challenges out there, but what we also know at the heart of professional marketing, there is a great opportunity for a return on the investment that our organization makes in marketing. So there is this, this phrase, return on investment. Um, you'll probably know this intimately if you're in a very data-centric or data-driven business or organization. But if you're in an organization where marketing is seen as the delivery arm or, oh, yeah, those are the guys um, you know, who make things look nice. Um, oh, yeah, they're, they're the bunch who do the social media. Then what we're not doing is advocating the value, the true value of marketing. So I'm going to show you and help you to kind of think around that question. Because what we don't necessarily have, and this is probably something that is one of our key weaknesses as a marketing sector, is that we don't really have an obsession with great return on investment. So marketing is still seen as a cost rather than an investment. So imagine this, if you have a little bit of cash, if you're um, very fortunate to have a little bit of cash to invest, so you're going to invest it in something, maybe that's in shares on the stock market, maybe that is in a, um, a savings account with your bank, maybe that's in cryptocurrency, so you're looking to kind of make an investment of that cash. Now you're not going to just put that cash away and think, okay, well I've spent that cash and then it's gone. An investment is something that you expect to see a return from. So why do we carry on thinking of marketing as a cost? Marketing has a budget that it's going to spend. Well, that's not a really neat way of showing value, is it? Because actually, if it was an investment, we would expect to be getting a return from it. So why, as marketers, do we fail to obsess about one of the key things that our organization wants to see from us, which is the return from the investment in us? And we don't obsess about it. We go and do a campaign, show a few little numbers, a few little vanity metrics that make us feel good. Hey, look how many followers we got. Hey, look, these people engaged with us. And we think we're doing a good job. We simply aren't. At the heart of professional marketing is an obsession with the return on the investment, investment of time, of people, and of budget. An investment means a return. So what are we actually returning back to the organization or the business in terms of revenues, in terms of value, and in terms of long-term strategy? Because if all we're doing is reporting the light stuff, the tactical stuff, the easy stuff, we're missing a trick. So at the heart of professional marketing, what also is a reality is that we should be really operating more commercially doesn't matter what role we're in, if we are producing content, if we are a digital strategist, if we are a product manager, if we're a marketing executive, if we're the chief marketing officer of a large corporate, wherever we are, we have got a responsibility to operate more commercially. And particularly in what is a sustainability driven world, I'm going to have used it twice, but I'm going to come on to what that means in a little bit more detail in a minute. We need to be more commercial. 
we need to take the perspective of the rest of the organization and be talking their language. Gone are the days really where you can get away with doing marketing speak because either people don't understand it or they don't believe it. Or worse still, they don't value it. So we need to raise the bar. We need to talk the language of the organization or the business. So we need to operate more commercially. And how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna show you. We also need to take more responsibility for ensuring that marketing is at the strategic table in the business. Okay, that the heart of professional marketing is strategy. The fact that we're contributing to strategy and by strategy, I mean the long-term planning for the business, not just being a tactical team who deliver the next great campaign. Yeah, we've got to do that, but we can and should be doing so much more. If we just think we're doing a good job because we've done a lovely glossy campaign and our social media traffic has increased, and look, Google Analytics says we've got more visitors through our website, and we think we've done our job, we're not doing professional marketing. We're just tactical delivery. The heart of professional marketing is so, so much more. And those are just three elements that I identified when I was putting this webinar together. To start to get us to think about, well, okay, if we're being set these challenges and these opportunities, what is it then that our business, and I'll say business, even if you're not in a business, we'll just call it business for now. What is it your business really wants to hear? Well, one of the things that they really don't want to hear is information. They, they're not interested in your lovely glossy report showing all the numbers and data of your latest campaign. Why? Because they don't understand it and they've never understood it. I've seen people glaze over in meetings when I've stood up proudly presenting on the screen all the latest analytics and insights. And me as a marketer thinking, hey, aren't I clever? Look, look at the graphs. Look, everything's in green. It's all amazing. And you can see people just drifting away. They're thinking about their shopping list that they've got to pick up on the way home, or they're just you know, planning what they're going to do for the weekend. They're not listening. And why? Because we haven't turned that information into intelligence intelligence being what the business really wanted to hear. In other words, well, what can I do with this, these numbers and these insights? Tell me how I can make better decisions. Tell me how I can optimize the opportunity or reduce the risk of getting the decision wrong. Talk to me in a language I understand. Don't share numbers with me. I'm not interested and I don't get it. You're marketing. You do all that stuff in your own time. Tell me what I need to do. And also the business wants to hear solutions to challenges. Don't come to me with trends that don't have an outcome. Don't come to me with ideas where you haven't actually plotted out what you would do if I say, yeah, there's some budget to go and do it. Come to me with the solutions. Don't just give me a challenge or tell me what's going on in the marketplace. Raise your bar marketing. Come on, let's do this thing. And also don't agree with what we've always done. Come to me with challenges. Come to me with things that, you know, sort of challenge the status quo. Tell me things that we could do and how we're going to do it so that we can do things differently. Because, you know, if I'm the sales director, I'm getting pressure from my customers. They're talking di about different things now. So talk to me in a way that I can solve their problems. If I'm the finance director, why am I seeing all these numbers going off in really weird directions? Tell me what's happening in the marketplace. Tell me what we can do differently feedback to me proper stuff this is what your business really wants to hear and really what they're asking for is for you to be willing to lead this lead the conversation lead what you're going to do next not be the kind of the the followers really that's not what marketing could and should be we can balance strategic and tactical the long term with the day to day kind of operational stuff. We have the capability. We have the tools. We know we've got the tools. If you read the latest marketing textbook, all the models and tools are in there. We are simply not using them commercially and appropriately. We're taking the easy option and doing the sexy stuff in social media rather than the process and the nuts and bolts of real professional marketing. It's so, so important that we change the game here. The business also really wants to hear that you're out in the field, that you're not just behind a screen doing digital in your little silo, thinking that you've done a good day's work because you've run a few campaigns and sent out a few emails. Yeah, you've still got to do that. That is in your job description. Of course, you know, we are the communicators who set 
the, the, the sort of the feeling of the marketplace so that when the customer is engaged, they kind of get who we are and what we do, but we should be out there in the field, going out on sales visits with the salespeople, going into the warehouse to see what the stock levels are with the operations director or manager. We should be out of our silos. This is what the business wants. They want us to engage. And why do we think that sales and marketing have always had this kind of slightly tenuous at best relationship? It's because we're not actually out with them. If you're in an organization where it's a regular thing, it's a regular practice to have these kinds of real engagements, then you might say, well, I've got a good example, Neil, of you know, where we actually do do this stuff. But most organizations, I think if they're being really truly honest, have a marketing team who are invisible. And they're doing stuff they think is good, but it's only scratching the surface of the potential. What else does the business want from us? Well, they want these trends, trends, trends to be reported back into the organization with an opportunity and a little bit of a plan idea as to how we can respond. You know, we've heard over the last sort of three or four months as we've come out of all the isolations and lockdowns and businesses returning to some kind of activity with a bit more energy behind it, Notice I didn't say the word normal. There is no normal. Um, we'll have another conversation on another day about that one. But what we're still seeing are new emerging trends. So how are you going to report back to your organization what your business really could do to maximize the opportunity of those trends? You know the trends because you're doing the insights. You're watching the numbers. You're seeing how things change. So why aren't you reporting back those opportunities? in a really rounded commercial way so that you can have those conversations around that strategic table and actually get the business moving forward in a, a tangible and I'm going to use the word again sustainable way well if you are then brilliant let's let's hear it because most people aren't and the business really really wants to hear this point again that I will continue to make that marketing is an investment aligned with business goals. In other words, if you're given a budget or you're given time to do something, are you spending that time and that budget in such a way that you can show there's a return against the higher goals, that if the business is gonna try and go in a certain direction to sell products and services to a the particular marketplace, that all the activity that you're doing isn't just about this corny phrase, which I really, really don't like, which is brand awareness. Again, that is such a thing that the business doesn't want to hear. Can you measure that really, truly? What you can measure is how your activities as a marketer aligned with the outcomes. The outcomes being growth, movement into a new market, expansion, sales, revenues, profit. These are the business goals. And if we're not aligning our marketing activity directly with those goals, then we're not actually investing our time and energies appropriately. And these are the things the business really wants to hear. You know, I'm being quite tough on us all, and I'm putting myself in this category as well. I'm not saying I do all these things. I don't. I fail at most of these things most days. But also what I recognize is that most of us are, if we really put our hand on our heart and said, actually, out of all these things that the business really wants to hear, how many of these do I consistently deliver? I bet there are many people watching or listening to this who would honestly be able to say, yeah, I do all of those things. But this is what the business really wants to hear. Now, why is this stuff all changing? Why are we having this conversation now? Why is this webinar so, so poignant and sort of profoundly positioned right here in the whole kind of course of history? Well, because the marketing mix has changed forever. Customers are no longer just buying your products. It used to be, the marketing definition used to be, to sell a product or service uh, profitably that solves customer needs, or something like that. You know, it's been so long since I've even thought about that old marketing definition, I don't even really remember it now, because it's changed, it's morphed, it's evolved, because customers are really not just buying your products and services, they're buying you. You as an organization, you as an individual, you as a team, you as a brand, you are not your products and services. You know, over the last couple of years, we've seen organizations pivot through 90 degrees and do something completely different to solve all of the global challenges that we've had, 
not selling their old products and services anymore. Same business, same brand, just reimagined. And those organizations and those businesses are being bought into. So customers are buying into something which isn't just your products. And I'm gonna tell you what that is in a minute. And something else that's really changed within the marketing mix is that simply we don't trust what you're saying. So whatever you're coming up with in your marketing spiel, your advertising, your digital content, we don't trust it. Don't care who you are, don't care what sector you're in. There's a real skepticism over the authenticity, the honesty, the transparency of organizations now. And as emerging generations come through and become the budget holders, the decision makers, the people with the cash to spend, they're becoming more and more skeptical. They simply don't trust what you're saying. And so what have we seen in the marketing mix? The whole you know, influx of influencers, for example, um, recommendation sites, you know, price comparisons, price comparison portals, all of these things are coming up because the marketing mix has changed. We don't trust the actual provider. So we need to see advocates before we'll actually believe that what they're saying is true. Advocates and influencers who have kind of experienced that brand or that product or service and can actually then justify that we should be focusing on them and spending our money with them because the customer simply doesn't trust what you're saying directly. So it's getting more complicated, it really, really is. And to be honest, if we're really honest here, everywhere is now a commodity marketplace. You might think, oh, well, we're not because we're specialists. No, you're not. I can buy from the company down the road exactly what you offer or something very, very similar to solve my needs. So how are you gonna be different? How are you going to differentiate? How are you going to sort of add that extra little piece of value? How are you going to communicate to me and me being the customer, not me being Neil, but how are you gonna communicate with me that core competency, that unique selling proposition, that thing that makes you engageable or that is the little hook that can actually hook me as a customer in to at least going a little few steps further in that customer journey that you've so proudly created because everything is a commodity. And we don't believe that even if on your website you say, oh yeah, in stock, we don't even believe that now because when we part with our credit card details and then suddenly we get an email and say, well, thank you very much for that purchase. The delivery lead time, because it's really hard to source this product because of Brexit, because of COVID and because of all these other excuses which we're gonna bundle into this support email, actually you're not gonna get your product or service for another three months. But hold on, you said on the website it was in stock and you've now got my money. Everything has changed. The marketing mix has changed forever. So it's actually, if you think about it, not really about what you're saying, but it's about what your customers are hearing. And this goes deeply into something that's called behavioral economics. Look it up, it's a really fun topic. It's all about understanding the psychology of that interaction and that engagement and that perception of experience and putting the numbers behind it. There is a science behind solving this problem. And we're not gonna solve this problem right here today, but what we're doing is highlighting some of the areas where there is this kind of natural need and this natural desire to change. So why has the marketing mix changed forever? Well, the old original marketing mix, if you're not familiar with it, was product, place, price, promotion. It was all about you. It was all about the things that you had to offer. And as long as you shouted loudly enough and widely enough and for a consistent length of time, people would buy your product or service. And if it was roughly at the right place and you could actually deliver it, yeah, you can have a sustainable business. The marketing mix has changed forever. We're seeing other things coming into play. Yes, those four elements are still there, but we're also seeing new stuff coming in. There's a big, big emphasis right here, right now on people diversity, equality, sustainability, ethical sourcing of product from overseas. All of these things come into this kind of people or you might term it stakeholder piece. It's really important we remember that if this is the marketing mix, we've got to focus on that. This isn't something that happens elsewhere in the organization. We are responsible for the marketing mix. If we have the word marketing anywhere in our role or our job description, 
then people is something we need to be taking seriously. Process as well. How many of us actually think of ourselves as process managers or process executives? We don't, we think we're marketing, which puts us into the, we do the website, we do the social media, but actually we're also responsible for elements of the process because process equates to delivery of product or service to customer and we're responsible for that. So why do we not get into the warehouse and see what the stock levels are? Why do we continually focus blindly on brand awareness and actually creating too much demand for the product or service that we don't have in stock? You see where we're falling down. This is professionalism in marketing. It's about covering all bases. And a big one that's coming through right now, well, there's been a few that have come through over, over recent years. And if you're not looking at personalization, another P, and notice they're all with P's. We've got another one, personalization, in the marketing mix. If you don't personalize the offer, and actually you don't have to personalize it down to an individual, as long as the individual feels that you have, then you've done your job. Because it's always in the eye of the beholder. That's the key thing here. So how do you personalize the experience? So when you talk about the service that you give to your customer and the customer more generically, so customers, internal customers, external real paying customers, do you personalize that experience or give them the feeling you're personalizing? This is professional marketing. And the big one, the ninth one in the list, and the list will go on, there will be more and more of these added. And I've got another one for you in just a second, the 10th, but the ninth one is purpose. I'm going to talk a little bit about purpose in a moment but people as i said right at the outset here are not just buying your products and your services anymore they're not really even buying your brand anymore they're looking at your higher purpose as a group of people a group of human beings coming together to do stuff that you want to then sell or communicate they want to know what your purpose is what's the real reason behind you coming together as a group of people you call yourself business you call yourself a brand what actually are you? Who actually are you? What is your purpose? What is your higher reason for being? It's not your products. It's not your services. It's not your processes. You've got a more of, of an ethereal kind of reason for being. Why did you get together in the first place? What's your vision? Are you doing this, this vision thing in, in your mission as you go towards your vision? Are you doing this thing ethically and sustainably? Are you doing it the right way? Are you being kind to the planet and everybody who's engaged with you? What is your purpose? It's a big, big question. But a lot of marketers say, well, that's not really my thing because it's not actually in my job descriptions. It's not really kind of what I do. Well, marketing has changed forever. I can tell you right here, right now, it actually is in your job description, even though it's not stated there. We own the marketing mix. And the 10th P, which I'm going to add into this marketing mix, is profit. We can get very easily distracted by things like purpose and personalization and process and people and, oh my goodness, Neil, how much more are you going to add into this? Well, I'm going to add in another one, which is P for profit. It's different to price. And P for profit comes out with this kind of story about commercialism. It comes out with this story that I keep going on about, about return on investment. The big P for profit should be right there. It's a big, big part of the marketing mix. But for most organizations and for most marketers, it's not really. It's a kind of a thing that you might do if you've got enough time at the end of a project or a campaign. But no, professional marketing is all about having these big three new players in the mix, personalization, purpose, and profit. We're not here to figure out how we're gonna do those things today, but just being aware that you're gonna to need to focus a little bit more on those things at least gets you started on that journey. And this word sustainability, this is the fourth time I've said it. I'm keeping a mental note of how many times in this session already um, I've said it. And this is the fourth time I've used the word sustainability. This is gonna be at the heart of your marketing. I'm not gonna solve this for you here today and we're not going to kind of really delve too deeply into this but the concept of marketing sustainability and the concept of sustainable marketing they are different we have got a program that's coming up for you three uh, webinars that are coming up for you um, over the next sort of three weeks which we are going to do some very deep dives and they're going to be in a format that is a little bit different to this and they're not going to be like a presentation with a, um, a chat at the end of it. 
uh, for the other questions and answers. These are going to be much more based around panel discussion. They're going to be short presentations with maybe an interview with an expert. And we're going to help you to kind of pull together and build the ideal future proof brand. Okay, marketing sustainability is a core concept that the top professional marketers are now looking at. So if this is a new topic to you, I would really, really strongly suggest that you devote these three hours to really, really empowering your business and feeding stuff back into your business that is gonna be so powerful for going forward. So on the 7th at mid uh, midday noon, we're gonna be talking about embracing sustainability within your business. On the 14th at noon, we're gonna talk about how to avoid greenwashing. In other words, not just paying lip service to sustainability. And on the 21st at noon, we're gonna talk about building a sustainable brand. And as I say, these are very, very powerful, uh, very action oriented sessions that we've got planned for you. So I'm really looking forward to be part of it. I'm one of four people involved uh, in these sessions. And I think you know, they will be really, really powerful to help you to really move that, this, this whole marketing sustainability game forward in your organization. So you can register for these at marketingcollege.com forward slash events. And I'll uh, sort of put that up as a little reminder right at the end of this session. So one of the things I've said is really, really key um, in the whole kind of journey, if you like, of your brand moving to a kind of a higher level of marketing. Um, and I think this is really quite kind of quite an important um, sort of element, really, in terms of how we're going to sort of see the changes over time. One of the things I want to kind of highlight to you here is this idea that your collective higher purpose is almost certainly more relevant to your audience than the products and services that you offer. So when I talk about this higher purpose, how could you kind of take the first steps? We will cover this in these three webinars that are coming up and I'm actually gonna cover this as well in a future um, session like this. But for now, what I want you to think about when you start to think about, well, if you're talking about higher purpose, how would I even begin to find out what we would be looking at here? Well, it's using a business Ikigai model. Okay, if you're not aware or familiar with Ikigai, to find your, pur your purpose, if you like, in life, um, you can basically look at these four questions. What things excite us? And you can do this personally, but you can do this certainly as part of your business. So in our business, what things excite us? What things provide energy? What things kind of invigorate us? What are we better at than our competition? So what do we actually would say are our unique selling propositions? What are the core things that kind of make us different really and better than the competition? What do our stakeholders need? And if we're talking about sustainability and the world is talking about sustainability, so this is now, you've got to do this thing now. So what do our stakeholders need from us to become environmentally, socially and economically sustainable? In other words, if they're going to be here in the future, and this is by stakeholders, I mean, yes, customers, but I also mean our business partners, our resellers, our wholesalers, our retailers, anybody who supplies to us. What do they need to become environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable? Because if they don't, well, you'll probably remember Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England, saying a couple of years ago, organizations who don't do this and just carry on with their trying with their attempt to do business as normal will not be in business in the future. So we've got to start thinking about this stuff. And then the final question of this, to find this business purpose, this sweet spot at the middle, is from all of these things, in what ways could our business be rewarded? So if you can do things that excite you as a business, that you're better than the competition at, that provide value to all of your stakeholders and that you can be rewarded for, that in itself probably is your business's higher purpose. And then you'll probably, by answering those four questions, not come up with the words product or service. So it's something deeper, it's something more sort of organic and it's something more fundamental to your existence as an organization. So bringing all of that together, purpose, personalization, focus on profit, return on investment, raising the bar, being more commercial, what is gonna be best practice 
for 2022 because you know we're now into kind of like almost like the finish straight if you like for this year so it is hard to believe but as we're listening to this and as i'm talking about this we're kind of focusing on year end now which is just it's just incredible but we are so what is going to be best practice for 2022 for me the key mantra here the key thing we've got to continually remind ourselves is that we need to change how our business defines the word marketing. Because all of us are more than our website and our social media. And we've, over the years, certainly over recent years, with the proliferation of digital marketing, we've become almost pigeonholed as marketing. Oh yeah, that's the digital team. But we're not. Marketing best practice for 2022 is targeted with redefining who we are as a business, who we are as a set of people, what our purpose is, the high purpose, not a light little soft touch purpose, the deeper purpose for our organization. So how can we change this marketing definition? Well, first of all, we can think about how we're going to change the expectations of everyone we work with, our colleagues and management. We're going to start to talk a different language. We're going to start to talk their language so whoever they are if they're operations we start to talk operations not marketing if they're hr we start to talk about people and how we're using resources in the business we start to really have more touch points and more connections and engagement with the rest of the organization by doing that we start to change their expectations of us if we stay in our little digital silo we will always be defined as the team who sit in the digital silo. So it's down to us to begin to change the expectations of the colleagues and management. We need to share the story of our return on investment in the resources. Forget your traditional marketing reports. Wouldn't it be amazing if next month, or maybe the end of this month, you actually shared something very, very different, a return on investment report. In other words, the investment of people, time and budget that the business has put your way, you actually report back on that, the return on that investment, rather than the traditional marketing report that has the numbers and the insights and the analytics. How do you think that would change the marketing definition? It would form a different view. It would set different expectations. And I will almost guarantee you the perception from those receiving those reports will be very different in a very positive way. What we could also do is actually mirror something that has been an evolving thing, which I've kind of spotted um, with a few other people over sort of recent years. This whole idea of um, in some organizations, and it is some of the more innovative, some of them the more creative organizations, this role of, of chief growth officer, it used to be called chief marketing officer, but it's been redefined, chief growth officer. Well, why don't we actually take out the word marketing from our job description or from our title and actually put the word growth in there? How would that change your, the expectation of what you are and who you are? How would that change the professionalism with which you operate every day? If you had growth rather than marketing, you can define what growth is. I'm not just talking sales volume and sales value. This could be growth in a way that you define growth of the people that you engage with as an organization, growth of the efficiency of the processes, growth of the entire marketing mix, growth of the purpose in which you operate and that you all bond together through. You define growth, but what an interesting word that could be. So maybe if we mirror this whole concept of business growth, it actually puts a very different spin on the word marketing. And yes, we are gonna be doing the social media, but for reasons of growth, not just to get likes. We could and should probably, and I would say probably must use the language of optimization, optimizing everything that we do. So actually looking at everything and saying, how could we do that better? How can we do that more efficiently? How can we do that faster? How can we do that using less resources? Because by definition, that will in itself give us more value on the investment in us. So let's get obsessed with the word optimization. Really, really important. And let's become obsessed with continuous improvement. 
that phrase continuous improvement was something that management consultants came up with I think back in the 1980s and it became a bit of a cliche but it is now back in fashion continuous improvement every minute of every day marketers who are operating professionally and changing how they're perceived and how marketing is defined in their businesses continually improve everything that is down to the level of an individual post on Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, every single thing that you post, could you improve it? Could you learn from the last one and maybe just make a little incremental change? So next time, it's just fractionally better. If you can, you're becoming obsessed with continuous improvement. That is a key thing that professional marketers are doing right now. And the key, I think, really for this is that from junior assistant content producer through to chief marketing officer of a big global organization, all of us, if we have the word marketing or content or communications in our role, should be talking product, people, process, profit, and really importantly going forward, purpose. Because those are the things that provide both value to the organization, real value on the investment they make in marketing, but also at the same time, and this is the key thing, value creation for all of the stakeholders, customers, suppliers, resellers, all of the people around our organization, upon which you know quite a few of them probably their lifestyle and their livelihood relies. We have a big responsibility as marketing. So now is the time to change the marketing definition from that tactical team who do stuff in their little silo to an organization that provides real, real value to everybody that it touches.